Hey, how you doing? I'm Van, and uh, I like K-pop. If you're coming from my last video, that may be something of a surprise, but, you know, I can like two things. Most people can. It's fun. Try it sometime. A lot of people have a pretty negative opinion of K-pop, at least in terms of the general community. On one hand, I can't really convince you to like a whole genre, just because I feel like you should. But if your entire perception of K-pop is based on either someone else's opinion, or you listening to two lines of one group before you decided you didn't like them, you're just every parent who listened to metal in the 80s. And I feel no sympathy for you. Period, my wife says. But also, there's a purpose to this order. I, it's gonna make more sense as to why I went from metal to K-pop closer to the end of this video. But we'll get there. You should subscribe, though. Do that. I, I'm almost at a thousand. It'd be awesome. It'd be great. It'd be real nice to see a couple of dollar signs. You know what I'm saying? I'm just being honest. I like money. Oh, man. But yeah, no, I, I've already spent a lot of time defending K-pop for a video titled something like The Problems with K-pop or K-pop as Problems or whatever it is this video is going to be called. But I felt kind of the need because there's still this weird public image that K-pop has to deal with, even with it being like, I think, like the number four music industry in the world right now. I say industry as if it isn't an entire genre. I want to establish the fact that I'm not just a hater, I am a fan, because I've been into K-pop at least, like, peripherally, since about 2015, 2016. Um, I knew about Gangnam Style, of course, everybody knew about Gangnam Style, but I discovered specifically um, Fantastic Baby by Big Bang and Lucifer by Shiny. I, I knew both of those, we rocked them, and then that was about, that was about it. But then in 2021, um, I met the absolute biggest K-pop nerd I've ever met in my entire life, and then I married her. But she has a 48-hour a K-pop playlist, which is crazy enough on its own, but also she rides passenger seat. I drive everywhere. She refuses to give up DJ privileges. So you, you get used to it. You learn a thing or two. And uh, I've learned that I'm kind of a big fan, at least of certain groups. But K-pop always sort of existed in its own little niche sphere that really you couldn't take off the internet. It didn't really matter who you were with or what you were hanging out with, if somebody brought up the, the concept of K-pop, the general public was a little taken aback by it. But K-pop has a lot of problems. And that's what this video is about, hence the title. The more I thought about it, the more I looked, the more problems that I noticed, but after some soul searching and some looking around and digging, I narrowed it down to three, because I like threes on this channel. Couldn't tell you why, I just do. It's, you know, threes company. Subscribe. Come on. Come on, give me something here, please. Thanks. But we're gonna go ahead and tackle the, uh, the number one problem with K-pop, and the one that probably everybody's already aware of and expected to see here, and that's the fans. When I pitched the idea of this video to my wife, her first response was, Ooh, be careful. There are some, some crazy people out there, some very crazy, very unfortunate people, um, that exist in our world. K-pop is a huge genre. There are millions and millions and millions of fans, and there's probably only a couple hundred that are bad, really. But there's such a known problem with K-pop fans being bad that even within the community itself, there is a term for them, which is sasang. A and individuals engaging in sasang behavior are fans who are huge, mega, super fans that become so big of fans that they commit crime. You should take a look at yourself if you're committing crimes for a group that will never know you exist other than seeing the newsfeed that you're in jail. <laughs> they don't want you. They want probably something else. Entirely. Just, just go home. Just sit down and think about your life if you have considered these things. It's probably only a couple of hundred, objectively. But when K-pop idols are regularly pulling, like, cameras out of their teddy bears that are thrown to them, or they're getting used tampons sent to them, used panties, or used whatever else, that is probably their condoms. They're probably, they've probably gotten used condoms also. Yeah, I know, right? It's yucky. It's yucky, but it's probably true. But even on the more positive side of the K-pop community, you run into sort of the same issue that you did with metal, and that's that people in the K-pop community are so engrossed in their own ideas and their own thoughts and their own little bubbles that they communicate almost entirely in their own language, and if you get even the slightest thing wrong, some of them will bite your fucking head off. If I'm looking at a band I like, they have to be my favorite band for me to know the members of that band, what instruments everybody plays, all of that good stuff, but usually I know their name and I know what they play. In K-pop, 
you will know their name. You will know their date of birth. You will know their blood type. You will know their favorite color. You will have married them twice in your own head and then divorced them at least three times after that somehow. Don't ask how that maths. You become enamored with these individuals and then you learn the choreography and then you learn the music videos. The third problem is that the community is so intense and so mind-bogglingly in charge of how well K-pop does. Because again, it doesn't have the same sort of general public appeal. The online community is k-pop for the most part if these idols do anything that is remotely out of fashion or out of style or out of taste they are blasted like it's nobody's business they are canceled they are drugged to the ground whatever it needs to be and it can be something like oh they jaywalked once when they were 17 years old before they joined exo the one that you mentioned that was like he just said that they were like shiny or something like that And then got bullied off the internet. And then got bullied out of the group. Out of, out of the group, yeah. And that's the problem. The fans have so much sway. That's something as simple as going, I think our group is similar to this other group, is enough to get you kicked off of your group. But the community is always going to be the biggest hurdle for anyone who wants to get into K-pop and wants to actually engage with the content. It is the Metalhead experience. Like Metalheads, they fucking hate you. And that's because they think that any interest you show in their music is probably going to be used to mock them. It's a defense mechanism. They have to be defensive and on edge because the public is so weird. Not so much anymore, but that mentality is still there. That thought process is still there. People are still scared to talk about the fact that they listen to K-pop, even though it is one of the largest genres of music in the world. Just tone it back a little bit, I guess, is the point that I'm trying to make here. Stop doing crime, uh, for one. That would be a good place to start. Uh, secondly, accept new people into the fold. Accept that people can be sort of aware of K-pop, and they don't have to know everything. That's fine. That's okay. That's how you get new fans. You didn't know everything at one point, and someone educated you, so... Don't bully people off the internet for not knowing as much as you do. And third, be aware that your idols are people. Your idols have thoughts, feelings, emotions, and above all else, just like every other human being in the world, they have flaws. Yes, you may like Jimin. Yes, you may have a thing for Changbin or Hongbin. But right now, the only way you know them is through a filter, a sanitizer, and a sensor who has then edited everything to post just this picture-perfect version of them because they can't have controversy unless that is their entire character or they go solo. Uh, which, speaking of, this is something that's been relatively rectified within the last few years, but there is something of a lack of solo artists within K-pop, but more than that, that's a minor problem now. We have a lot more in the last few years than we had initially, but we don't have frontmen. We don't have the number one person who other people can pick out of the group, who the general public can look at and go, I know who that is. I, I know who that one is right there. That's Felix. That's Felix from Stray Kids. I know him. A good front man stands out. K-pop has no, in my opinion at least, front men that stand out. Exactly. Arlequin's a great example. You have the front man who stands out to you. You look at them and you go, I need to learn about that person because they look interesting. They look like the most unique member. At least relatively speaking. Of course, they have their leaders, as mentioned. They aren't on the same level as, say, an Ozzy Osbourne in Black Sabbath. A David Draymond from Disturbed. They are not the ones going out of their way and becoming the group, essentially. Oh, uh, so, yes, it's the, speaking of holo, uh, holo artists. Holo yeah, holo artists. It's like solo artists, except it's specifically for, for uh, holograms. Yeah, it is. I mean, Kiana might be a hoe. I mean, go for, go her. Alright? Yeah. I can do what you want. But as far as solo artists go, at least we have gotten some breakouts within the last few years especially. Kiana, of course, being one of the older breakouts um, to, to really level her solo career and work with Psy, another solo artist. The solo artist. Regardless of Psy, regardless of your opinion of him, regardless of how you feel about him as like a cringe artist or whatever you want to say about Gangnam Style, he's probably the biggest solo artist out there, other than maybe Jungkook at the moment. America loves its frontmen and its individuality, you know? Like, those are the same people that won't learn a group if they can't just learn one member of it. And that's a lot of people. That is a disturbing amount of people. So we have to cater to the public in order to save the private, I guess, would be the best way to word that. You get what I mean? Well, IU was actually the number one solo artist. I've never even heard of her. That shows you how fucking not 
aware of the K-pop side of things I am like I thought I was. I'm trying, man. All right, give me, give me, give me, a, give me a second here. But lastly, the number one issue, well, this is the number three issue, isn't it? Yes, it is. I lost count. The number three issue in all of K-pop is the overgeneralization of the genre. Because if I were to ask you, the viewer, hi, how you doing? If I were to ask you, the viewer, to describe the sound of K-pop, if I were to tell you to describe the instrumentation or the average beat progression or chord progression, if I were to tell you to describe K-pop in a sound, what sound would that be? Because I have no clue. In the cases of certain groups, and you know, it, it feels basic to talk about BTS, but BTS really are good. They, they're one of, if not the best out there, and that's why they're way up in top, on top doing their thing. Make sure you don't say BTS paved the way. I will punch you in the no, of course they didn't. Of course BTS didn't pave the way. Some... No, no. They did not pave the way for K-pop. Yeah, of course. No, yeah, no, uh, uh Even looking at groups like BTS, let's say you go back to their debut, and then you go back to whatever the, their last project was before they had to go to the military. You compare those projects, they are not the same group. They don't have the same sound, they don't have the same energy at all. Because... They've aged tremendously. I say tremendously. It's like eight years. That's forever in K-pop. Ten years. I, I can tell you, I'm not the same person I was ten years ago. I don't even listen to the same things. So I can 100% see why it would sound so dramatically different between those times. But then you compare groups. Let's say, you know, I'm looking at BTS and then this other group gets recommended to me. I'm just like, oh, Block B. I wonder what they sound like. And uh, that's that's stoner music. Stoner music. That's what that is. I'm, I'm vibing with it. I'm bumping with it. Sounds nothing like BTS. But then you got like Day Six, and they're a band. They're, like they just have instruments and like drums and stuff. Like they're just a, a an actual band that's still called K-pop. Yeah. So you've got K-pop. Right. You've got branches that are like K-pop. Yeah. Like right. Like K-R-E. Yeah. Of course you have those branches. But that's not what people group them under. No one discusses K-Rap because that looks like crap when you spell it out. I'm serious. I've thought that every single time. Like, I, I'll be listening to, like, like August D or something. I'm just like, oh, yeah, this is some K-Rap. It's crap. Fuck. Can't use that. Everybody hears K-Pop. And then they assume BTS or Blackpink. Or Twice now. Twice is doing good. We've been to a Twice concert. We've been to a Twice concert. Even artists uh, of, of, of relative notoriety, G Idol, August D, Fist, FTI, F, is it, Fe it's called Feature Island? FT Island, who, um, I'm gonna call Fistland. I stole that from, from, from my wife, but it's very funny. I'm gonna use it a lot. Gotta become a fan of, of featuring islands just so I can call them Fistland, like to their face. I'm gonna go to a meet and greet and I'm gonna see what they think. I don't know, man. The, Look, once you fist together, you stay together. <laughs> why does this matter? Why, why do these problems and why do these concerns matter at all to K-pop? Because K-pop seems to be flourishing. It seems to be bigger than ever, and it is. That's the thing. That's the crazy thing. However, at some point, the bubble has to burst. At some point, it's going to become too much. It's going to become too great of an amount. An, and it's going to collapse in on itself. And I say that from experience. I say that as a metal fan looking back and i've mentioned the Mo the the uh, metallica live in moscow concert it had like 1.6 million people it yes it is just as insane as it sounds i'll show you the video later it's fucking wild metal popped it became too big for itself and it caved of course metallica is still metallica but everything else kind of crumbled under its weight and metal is struggling now it's been a long time but metal is not in a good place. K-pop being not tied to the general public, being tied to the internet works faster. It works quicker. Everything on the internet is like three to four times quicker than everything in the real world. And because of that, you end up with this eventuality that within the next five or ten years, K-pop is going to be in a very bad place. It's going to have collapsed and cannibalized itself to the point that there's so little left. People will be pushed from the community. 
groups will quit. We'll stop hearing about them, seeing them on the seeing them on the radio is the phrase I was about to say. The labels themselves, the labels that are in charge of these groups and some of the solos, these labels work these people. They work these idols and these these groups to the fucking bone, dude. JYP especially is really notorious for this, not giving breaks, like not letting them see the sun a little bit. Like you hear them talking in their things just joking about it. And I, I, I guarantee you as well, especially for, like, the girl groups, but almost definitely for the male groups as well, they have to watch their weight to, like, a model's degree. Like, they, their contracts are so strict and so demanding of them that I can't really imagine many of them lasting that much longer on this level of grind. Let's look at the girl group twice. Number three largest in the world. And they have released, um, can you look at... Since their debut in 2015, which has been now nine years, but let's say eight years for the sake of it making sense. They have released seven albums. That's not counting mixtapes. That's not counting solo projects. That's not counting B-sides. And in 2020, 2020, just 2020, they released three albums. And uh, it's clearly working. That's the problem. They are clearly, clearly successful in doing this. But man, these girls gotta be tired. All of the groups that are out, that are being worked by their labels, when all of these groups disband or collapse or do whatever it is that's gonna happen to them, because it's not gonna be good, unfortunately, whatever happens, there's going to be a huge vacuum left, especially from just the top two, BTS and Blackpink. When they disband, K-pop needs something more solid to land on than what it has. The genre will continue, of course, but at that point, it becomes shaky, it becomes scary, and that's when the avalanche happens. That's when everything else ends up being a problem. When you have this aggressive community, when you have this lack of individual personality for people to latch themselves onto and to attach to, once that power vacuum exists, all of this is being sucked in and creating a bigger and bigger fucking hole. And yeah, I could be over-exaggerating, I could be thinking a little bit too much or overthinking on this one. But what I I look at and what I consider is the fact that we had NSYNC and Backstreet Boys. It's a rocket launcher, but when you uh, chew, it has to go like two more in the sky to pin land. Okay, so it has to go like up and, and then down. Like a cardboard box now. Why do you have a cardboard box? Do I don't know. America had boy bands and, you know, depending on who you ask, K-pop was kind of modeled after boy bands. But we had NSYNC and Backstreet Boys, and then we had the others. We had everybody else. We had dozens and dozens and dozens of other boy groups. And then Backstreet Boys broke up. Or NSYNC broke up. Who broke up first? I don't know. Whatever the case. One broke up, and then the other broke up. And then boy bands never recovered. Never. And they never will either, most likely. At least not in America. Because people decided at that point that if Backstreet wasn't back, they weren't either. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it tremendously. I I do like K-pop. I like a lot of music. I like a lot of different things. I am a, a complex individual, and I have ADHD, so multiple things appeal to me. I do think, regardless of anything else, that everybody should listen to more than just one genre of music. But yeah, I don't know. Subscribe to the video or something. Like it, comment. I, I I just zoned out for a minute there. I got nothing else, dude. I thought I had something, but it's been, you know, a boring-ass day at work. I just stood there and collected a paycheck. <laughs> but y'all have a great rest of your night. You want